What's going on everyone? It's Bobby and we are back testing what some are saying is the best autofocus 35 millimeter in the market. We have our hands on it, the Tamron 35 1.4. Now, with all the reviews, I do have to let you know that we are not paid by anybody to do these reviews. These are our thoughts and our thoughts only. But having said that, we have to thank Shriro Imaging, who are the distributors of Tamron here in Singapore for providing the lens. And we're also gonna put this lens against the Nikkor 35 1.4, since we are using the Nikon mount, and we have in my hands the Nikon D850, what some people say is the best of the last of the DSLRs. Does that make any sense? Possibly not, but it is a phenomenal DSLR. 45.7 megapixel sensor, seven frames per second. ISO, phenomenal dynamic range, phenomenal 4K full frame. You get the drill. This is one hell of a camera. Anyway, let's get down to it. First, let's talk about the Tamron. You know, Tamron, this is for Tamron's 40th anniversary lens. And on the brochure itself, they call it, and I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but it's pretty much the same, the finest lens they've ever made. And uh, you know what? There's some truth to that. But first, let's talk a little bit about the design. Now, recently we reviewed the 1728 E mount Tamron lens, and I said that was pretty much a basic feeling lens. Didn't have that high build quality that you saw on the Sony G Master. Well, things are different with this 35 1.4. This is built. This is a phenomenal build, actually. It's, it's heavier than the Nikkor at 800 plus grams, depending on which mount you're going for, Canon or Nikon. It's weather sealed. It's got this metal construction to it. It feels really solid in the hand, especially on the D850. Let's talk about what's inside of this 14 elements, 10 groups. You have three, count it, three as spherical elements, four low dispersion elements inside of this. Your filter diameter is 72 millimeters on it, and your close focusing distance is 0.3 meters. So you can get pretty up close to subjects on this. You can get some nice, pretty semi-macro shots on it. But with that kind of spherical elements and that low dispersion elements tied in together, this should perform pretty well, right? But now, let's talk about the Nikkor 35 1.4. And with the magic of editing, we now have the Nikkor 35 1.4 on the D850. First off, we have 10 elements, seven groups. We have one spherical element. That's different than the three spherical elements on the Tamron. We only have one here with nano-coated crystal. 67 millimeter for the filter thread on the front of it. The weight of this lens comes in lighter than the Tamron at 600 grams. There is no image stabilization on either of these lenses, which is a little bit of a shame because at 1.4, you know, it would be nice to have because the D850 doesn't have it, but if you're using it on a Nikon Z6 or Z7 with the adapter, you're good to go. But it's a solid lens and a very expensive lens as well, coming around $2,000 plus dollars thereabout compared to the Tamron, which is around 900. So you are paying a premium for the Nikkor name, but sometimes the name doesn't mean it's better. Now, it's one thing to talk about the image quality, Let's show you the images side by side in Lightroom and compare the two lenses. Okay, so now we're taking a look at some images taken with both the Tamron 3514 as well as the Nikkor 3514. All of these images were taken with the Nikon D850. Now, I don't do any sort of scientific tests for this lens review here. What I've done is just use the shots that I've taken out in the streets and some have been edited, some have been not, just to kind of show you what it's like in the real world. Okay, let's look at the first image here. Now, this is my friend Alan and he's on a Panigale. Now, this is straight out of camera, has not been edited. Uh, one thing you're gonna notice right off the bat is that it's a softer image. Um, not as modern rendering as let's say a newer lens. But the second thing you probably noticed is the purple fringing around the jacket where, the, where it meets the white of the cuff. That's pretty severe also around the light, the handlebars, anything metallic. It can be corrected in Lightroom, but it takes a lot more work than let's say a more modern lens like the Tamron, case in point. This is an image I shot again with Alan with a Ducati Diavol. Now you can see a little bit of purple fringing around the lights, around a little bit of the middle of the body. It's not that bad. This is easily correctable in Lightroom. I've done it and much better than the Nikkor. But again, we're talking about a modern rendering lens versus an older rendering lens. But the Tamron does show a little bit of uh, chromatic aberration. Look at here on the grill of this BMW. Again, it's slight, not a big deal, but it is there. Now I'm gonna show you a couple of edited images just to kind of show you what it looks like in terms of portraiture. Now here's my friend Alan sitting on the back of the Panigale with the Nikkor 3514. It's sharp, 
but not the sharpest lens compared to this. This is the Tamron, okay, with the course all taken with the D850. This is a much more modern rendering lens. Now I have done color toning to both of these. That's pretty much it. I didn't do any sharpening in the face. I kept that as it is because we wanna stay looking as young as possible. Now here's a couple of photos of Kai Hong just to kind of show you the differences between the Nikkor as well as the Tamron. This is the Tamron. You look at it right away, you can tell. Sharp, modern rendering, great detail, looks great. Nikkor, different color coat tone. Could be just the time of day, could be the lens, but there is a difference there. As you can see, the skin is a little bit warmer, not as sharp, not as modern rendering. The eyes are not as sharp. Again, this is the characteristics of the Nikkor 3514. If you're shooting women, you're shooting people that have some imperfections in their face, they don't wanna show their age as much, the Nikkor might be the lens you want to, uh, to look at. But I'm gonna show you a couple, few, uh, few more images here just to kind of give you an idea of the performance of the Tamron. This is the Tamron. Look at the bokeh on this. Look at the separation. It's beautiful. Sharp right here where I wanted to be sharp. The rest of it just blows away in the background. I mean, this is a 3514, but sometimes I'm looking at these images and I thought I shot with a 3512 or 351.0. We'll look at a few more images here. Now, this is a, a shot of a French bulldog. The face is not as sharp as I would like it to be, but I like the dog great. We threw it in black and white, and I'm really happy with the image. Here's a stairwell that I shot at a bar uh, in Singapore here. Kind of cool, but again, just kind of shows you the detail. This has been edited, bumped up the clarity a little bit, some of the colors, but just shows you that this lens can really perform well. And I'm gonna show you my last test here, which I thought was a really good test to show the flaring of the Tamron lens right against the sun, shot right into it. As you can tell, there's a little bit of haloing here. This is right out of camera. And I gotta tell you, I'm really impressed with what Tamron's done with this lens. Again, the Nikkor is an older lens. It's been out for a while. The Tamron is new. So we expect the Tamron to be a lot better, but for the price difference, it's pretty interesting how well the Tamron performs. So as you can tell from the images in the Lightroom, the Tamron obviously has a more modern look to the images. It's still a beautiful bokeh in the background. I mean, it just melts away. The Nikkor, they're very similar in their imaging, but you feel that the Nikkor is a little bit more softer in the rendering. Maybe it's the resolving power of the lens. Obviously, it was made a few years ago for a camera not as high megapixel as the D850. Of course, being at 45.7 megapixels, this is where some of the older lenses you're gonna see that them topping out in terms of the resolving power versus the new Tamron, which is designed for higher megapixel DSLRs and of course mirrorless cameras with the adapter. But I have to say that the Tamron has really, it's impressed me for 899 US dollars retail versus you know the thousand plus two thousand dollar Nikkor 351.4. It's, it's um, you gotta hand it to Tamron. You know, sometimes I'm trying to be like, you know, you want to play nice on the fence and keep like, well, this lens is great, but this lens is great, but the Tamron is really that good. But if you're one of those people that needs to have a Nikkor lens with your Nikon, you're like, I need to have it, I don't care, I don't want a third-party lens. Okay, look, the thing with the Nikkor, it's very good, but if you're gonna be at 1.4, look for the softer images, the chromatic aberration. Once you stop down, it does get more sharper, you know, more contrast to it. So I would say that that lens performs better at a two to 2.8 and thereabouts versus 1.4 as the Tamron. But anyway, it's been a joy to test these lenses and I gotta tell you, shooting with the D850, I can see why people call this arguably the best DSLR on the market. It really is that good. Beautiful images, great uh, low light uh, qualities to it, dynamic ranges there and, hell, it's a D850, what can go wrong with it, right? Anyway, those are my thoughts on the Tamron 35 1.4. I mean, is it the best 35 autofocus lens on the market? I haven't seen one better than this. And that's saying a lot. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube. We appreciate all your comments, your feedback. Follow us on Facebook. Hit me up on Instagram if you have any questions you want to direct towards me. Until the next one, take care.